my name is Ollie Pitt. And I'm Johnny Taylor. And we're from Barclay Squares. Today we are talking with Bryony Williams, a semi-finalist of this year's Great British Bake Off. Good afternoon. Hello. So thank you for joining us this afternoon. My pleasure. Uh, we thought we would start the conversation with a brief game of Would You Rather. <laughs> um, so first up, Pru or Pool? Oh, oh gosh, what am I doing with them? <laughs> <laughs> Baking with them? Of course. Uh, Pru. Pru. Pru, definitely Pru, every time. Uh, Pru. Pru or Mary? Pru. <gasps> Always Team Pru. Noel or Sandy? No. no. Love no. Soggy bottom or burnt top? <sighs> Soggy bottom. Pool Hollywood handshake or an A level A star? <laughs> uh, a level A star. I didn't get a handshake, so whatever. Got uh, a life before or after Bake Off? After, definitely. After, okay. So why did you apply to be on the Bake Off? So I just did it really randomly the year before my year, and it was like after the semi final, and there was, you know, Noel comes on saying, Do you think you could be on the Bake Off? And I was yeah. like, Well, not really, but I'll try. Because um, as you guys know, I used to bake a lot. Yeah. Um, and a few people said, oh, you should try going on the Bake Off. So I applied, did it in like an hour and a half, just sent the application off, didn't tell anyone, didn't tell my husband, didn't tell my mum. Um, and just thought, well, that's it then, I won't hear anything. But then I got a phone call um, a few weeks later, and it was from London, I thought it was PPI, so I didn't answer. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and then I had like five missed calls, and I was like, God, they're persistent. Uh, and then I listened to my answer messages, and it was like, um, hi, it's so-and-so from Bake Off, do you think you could call us back? Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> So yeah, and then it just went from there. So yeah, it was very much on a whim, and just because mm. I thought, why not? Mm. So uh, was there a biggest factor in making you take this life-changing decision? There wasn't really. No, it was. It. I think because uh, I didn't think I'd get on. I really didn't think it would. It would go anywhere. So for me, it was just kind of like filling out the application, yeah. and then I thought that would be the end of it. But then I got the phone call, and then you kind of go through the steps, and you're like, oh, well, maybe I could yeah. get on. But every stage, I thought, no, that'll be it now. Maybe I'll apply again next year. But no, it wasn't anything in particular. It was just a bit of a random moment. So when you were younger, did you have any particular inspiration for baking or in life in general? Um, not really baking. Well, my, my nan was a home ec teacher. So, um, yeah, we did a lot of baking when we were younger, but like cupcakes and things like that, yeah. nothing crazy. Um, so, And I only really started baking in 2013. Um, which is, I don't know if you guys remember, I was off for like mm -hmm. nine months yeah. and I wasn't very well. And um, Miss Burns, actually, um, the nurse here, um, said to me, why don't you try something like an activity mm. to keep you busy? So try baking or knitting. I tried knitting, that was a disaster. <laughs> so tried baking and just, it went from there really. I found it quite therapeutic. Mm. So um, uh, yeah, so I've always used it as kind of a happy place. And you know, you get a nice product at the end of it. And I started on things like shortbread and worked my way up. And then like the first cake I made was a disaster and just tried to get better and better. But no, it wasn't something I'd aspired to from when I was little. Hmm. Okay, so I imagine this answer to be very long. <laughs> <laughs> However, Go if you it. were to sum it up yeah. in a minute or two, how has your life changed since the Bake Off? Okay, all right, quick answer. Uh, manic, everything's very manic, busy, great so lovely, people are so nice to me, and it's opened up a lot of doors that weren't there before, a lot of op exciting opportunities. Um, so yeah, it's, it's exciting at the moment. So before the Bake Off, you taught French and Spanish. I did. Uh, do you miss anything about being a teacher? Oh, I really miss QEH, like really miss it. I miss, I don't miss like the marking and things like that, but I miss being in the classroom, like with you guys, and, and it just, I've always loved teaching and I love languages and that will always be my, you know, my first love. Um, so I really miss that, you know, the fun that you can have in the lessons and the challenges that come with, with teaching. And I really miss this place. Do you think you'd ever consider coming back to oh, teaching yeah, one day? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've not, you know, for the minute, this is what's happening and it's, you know, but this is probably isn't going to last forever. So, yeah. you know, I'd love to come back to teaching in the future. Um, and I think it's something that you can come back to, which is nice. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I do miss it. So, as I said, life has changed quite a lot since the Bake Off. Yeah. Um, as you've become more known. Yeah. Um, so, the last time I checked, your Instagram had almost 100,000 followers, which yeah. is pretty crazy. It's pretty mental. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, in recent months, has been uh, like the suicide of two Love Island stars, yeah, yeah. as well as the recent incident regarding the Jeremy Kyle yeah, show. I know. Um, I which this has, morning, did you see that? Yeah. 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 Um, which has raised consequences. Uh, which has raised questions about the consequences mm. of just being suddenly thrust into the 
uh, public, like for our mental yeah, health. So how have you yeah. found this transition? Um, it's, do you know what? They've really, that's something that the team at Bake Off do incredibly well, is they really look after your well-being. Um, and I've, you know, I have been reading about, you know, the Love Island situation and Jeremy Carl and thinking how lucky we were on the Bake Off because they really do sort of wrap their arms around you and just look after you. And they're also, I think, one of the things about Bake Off is it's not exploitative. They mm. want to just show you as a baker. They're not trying to show you as a bad person yeah. or, oh, she's so bitchy or all this, that and yeah. the other. It's very much just like, look what they, what they can do, you know. And it's nice people baking in a tent. But they do, they look after your well-being, they give you a lot of, um, they talk to you a lot about the press and what the press will be like and how they'll be quite invasive and, you know, social media, how negative social media can be. Um, I'm very lucky in that I haven't really had, any, you know, much negativity on social media. Mm. But again, I haven't gone looking for it, which I think is something, you know, you have to protect yourself mm. on social media. People can be absolutely vile. I mean... Mm. You know, I, early doors, I saw a few comments about my hand and, you know, people saying some really unkind things. And from that point, I thought, I'm just not, there's no point looking at it. So I would never, like, search my name on Twitter or anything like that um, and just keep the happy, positive yeah. vibes going. And if anyone, you know, if anyone is rude about me on Twitter or whatever, I just kind of block them. You know, I don't mm. answer, don't feed mm. the trolls um, because there's, unfortunately, there is always people out there who will try to rip you apart. Mm. Um but yeah, I think I think it is the show's responsibility to look after the contestants, especially something like Love Island, where they're very exposed. Yeah. They're you yeah. know you know in every sense of the word. Yeah. So um, you know they need to be looked after, and it's not just during the show; it's very much after the show when they leave the you know they leave the sanctity and the safety of of the program, and they go out into the world, and people are like, right, I'm just going to tear you down, yeah. tear you to shreds, and that's where they need the support, and it's you know. I'm really glad they've taken yeah. Jeremy Carl off. I think yeah. that's such a positive yeah. move because it's just uh, just watching it makes me my back go up. Cause it's just so negative the whole thing. Do you think because uh, the Bake Off tent focuses on positivity between contestants mm. that that helps the media be more positive? I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I think that's a really good point. I think because because they don't stir it up. Yeah. Huh, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because they don't stir it up in the tent, and there is such a, a camaraderie between the bakers even though it is a competition, mm. you still want other people around you to do well. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's a really good way of putting it. And I think that does reflect, um, and cause we, you know, the bakers don't go out there and, you know, talk, you know, nastily about each other. We very much support each other. Yeah. Like if you look at Ruby, Manon, Imelda, Anthony, you know, if you look at our Instagrams, they're all quite interwoven yeah. in the positive, in, in a positive way, because, you know, if I post something, then Ruby will write something nice about it. Um, you know, if Imelda's posted a recipe, I will, you know, repost it or retweet it and be like, look yeah. what she's done, this is amazing. It's not like, ugh, oh, she's done this, oh my yeah. God, it's disgusting, whatever. It's not about that. And, and I think that, yeah, like you say, it's reflected. Yeah. So I guess from what you said, you're a firm believer in this idea that we can decide who we want to be ourselves. Absolutely, yeah. Before Bake Off started, before they started filming, Channel 4 and Love Productions, who make Bake Off, they sat me down and said, right, how do you want to approach this? Do you, do you want us to mention it? Uh, do you want to be the first disabled baker? Do you want to be, you know, any special equipment? And I said, absolutely not. Just mm -hmm. see what happens. And people didn't even notice. You know, people were tweeting saying, I'm oh, sure Brownie had a hand last week. Yeah. And, you know, it's, that's just the way it went. Which, yeah, you know, I could have been gone in there and made a massive fuss about it, but I didn't want to, because mm -hmm. that's not who I am. Yeah. Um, lastly, yeah. What, would you, what would be three pieces of advice you would give to a young person about to embark in life given your experiences? Wow, okay. Oh, three pieces of advice. Um, I think one of the main things is kind of just go for it. If you've, got, if you've got a dream or you've got an idea about what you want to do or something that you want to do in your life, just go for it and try because I'm very much... I always was, but I'm so much more now a firm believer mm -hmm. in you really never know what's going to happen and what's around the corner. Um, something I've been talking a lot to with sort of younger people, but I think it applies up to your age as well is um the idea of like resilience and persistence of, of never giving up um that's something i learned a lot in the tent that things can go very very wrong <laughs> but if you don't give up and you really do it's so cheesy and really cliche the whole mm, try if you don't succeed try and try again but it's actually true you know if you you know don't let don't let the haters get you down you know don't let the negative comments or you know any negativity that's coming your way um get to you too much just keep keep at it keep trying and the third piece of advice um, I would give at the minute 
and I think for your generation in particular, um, is to do with social media, and that is to put out positivity. Don't put negative things out on social media because um, in the world that you guys are growing up in, social media is everywhere and it's huge. Um, so the more positivity you put out, hopefully the more there is out there in general, um, and life's too short to be tearing each other down, especially on, on those kind of platforms. Um, and once you put it out there, it's out there. And, you know, they're just, yeah, don't be hateful, support each other. Yeah. Share the love. <laughs> Brilliant. That's all we have to ask. Thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks. <laughs>